another episode of House Label Fibres Podcast. My name is Wendy and you can find me on the internet everywhere under House Label Fibres um, on Ravelry and Instagram. How are you all doing? It's been a while. Um, I did record a podcast at the end of March but for some reason I didn't upload it. Um, I may upload that though because um, it was right at the start of this pandemic and there was so much uncertainty and I just wasn't feeling the vibe and I think that comes across in the video. Um, there was a lot going on and I was finding it difficult to process um, and yes I think I was I was kind of fighting it a little bit. Um, which you can tell on the video. I don't, I don't look comfortable. Yeah, I think I'll upload it because I have done quite a lot since then. Um, well, sorry, since my first, um, since my last uploaded video, which was February the first. Um, it's now May the twelfth, which is crazy. We're on the seventh week of lockdown here in the UK. Um, and we are almost, almost at the end. There is light at the end of the tunnel, people. I don't think we will go back to normal. Um, I think we will all have a new normal, but um, at least we will be able to leave our houses, which would be great because I've been in the house since the 20th of March. I haven't been anywhere, I've been on walk, I've been in the garden, and that's it. Um, I've literally not been anywhere. My husband has been the saviour in all of this, he has been doing the food shopping, um, and he has also been taking care of my parents, um, doing the food shop and things for them, which is where he currently is right now. Um, He's currently waiting for the beer aisle to open because in Scotland you're not allowed to buy beer before 10 a.m. Um, so he has just texted me to say he's waiting in the beer aisle and he's very embarrassed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what's been going on? What have you been doing? Obviously staying at home um, and not doing much. I have been lucky enough to have been working up until now, so for the past six weeks I have been working from home. Um, however, I was furloughed on Friday last week, um, so this is my fifth day of being furloughed. Um, which, you know, I'm not too bothered about really. Um, I'm thankful that the government are paying me 80% of my wage. Um, so to stay at home and keep everyone safe. Um, I'm thankful that I've not been laid off and this is a uh, opportunity for me to stay at home and do the things that I enjoy and still get 80% of my wage. So, you know, there's not really too much to grumble about. I have been knitting. I haven't done any spinning since March. Um, I have thought about spinning, I have wanted to spin, I just haven't done any. Um, I am in the middle of prepping a fleece uh, for one of my neighbours. She has a first cut of a grey Shetland, um, so it's a very, very tight little, um, in fact I've got it here. Um, it's washed, it's prepped. Uh, sorry, it's washed, it's just not prepped. So um, you can see, look at the tiny little uh, wrinklets. They are, um, it's a first cut grey Shetland fleece. So I started to card it um, because I don't have combs. But they, um, ignore my Rolex, they are gr they're not great. Um, but I was finding that because these are so tight um, that I was having to card it quite a lot and I don't know if you can see but there's quite a lot of neps in there. So I decided to buy some combs which I am waiting to arrive um, and then 
I think these will be better. I have a little, um, like a little carder. Um, so I tried to just flick the ends to see if combing it would be better and it's definitely better. So I'm going to comb it and then decide whether I want it worsted or woolen spun. Um, if I card it first and then make it into roll eggs, it will um, it will just be better, but obviously a longer drawn out process. So we shall see what happens with that. Um, so yeah, onto what I'm wearing. This is my throw over by Andrea Maori. I was a, lucky enough to be a test knit for her. Um, I, this is my first test knit for Andrea Maori and my third, because I've done the Stormcrop and the Weekender. I think that's all I've knit of hers. Stormcrop was my very first sweater that I that I knit last um, last autumn. So yeah, this is the throw over and it is literally a throw over. You can throw it over anything. It goes with everything. I think mostly probably because of the colours that I chose. Um, they were by accident, as I did mention in my last podcast, which I didn't upload, but I probably will upload. So I did talk into de talk in detail. Um, but the burnt orange here that I've got was going to be a dark grey. Um, but there wasn't enough contrast between this grey and the dark grey. So I... Um, I didn't have the option of ordering any more at that time. A different colour and I didn't um, want to wait for it to be shipped. So I used what I had and at that time I was knitting my Felix pullover by Amy Christophers. And um, so yeah, the only other let lopi that I had was in this this colour. So I just pulled that out and, and used that. Um, and I'm so glad that I did because I just love the colours and I just wouldn't have picked these these colours otherwise. Um, it is Let Lopi, it is a rustic yarn. Um, it's not for everyone. Uh, my husband feel, says that it's like hugging cardboard. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I love it. It's so warm. It's so cosy. And I wear this jumper all the time. Um, it's my most worn knitted item. And I think I've said that before about my Steingas. <laughs> but this, I haven't worn my Steingas in ages. Um, I haven't worn, I've worn my stone crop quite a few times. Um, my weekender I don't wear because I used... Um, not that I'm a yarn snob, but I didn't use um, wool yarn. I used acrylic. I just used what I had. And um, the gauge is all wrong. And my arms are like sausage casings. Um, and I just don't like it. I will knit that again at some point, though. Because it is a nice jumper. But, um, yeah, the shape and the gauge and the wool, the whole combination just doesn't do me any justice. So... I don't wear it. One thing I did do on this, which I was thinking of ripping back, but I didn't, um, was I used um, 3.5s on this for the rib. Um, 3.5s or 4s? Because I knit the body in a 5. I think I used a 4mm for the rib. And then I forgot to change on this one. So this, I knit the body um, in a five millimeter, like I just said, and um, I didn't change for some stupid reason. So I have one baggy wrist and one slightly tighter wrist. But there's only me that knows, and now the entire YouTube. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's... Um, it is what it is, it's fine, it's just a little bit gapy uh, than this one. It's holding up well considering I have worn it probably, I probably wear this five days out of seven. 
Um, yeah, it, I just, everything I own, it goes with it. Everything. I've worn it with dresses, I've worn it with jeans, I've worn it with dungarees, um, skirts, it's literally everything. It's the most versatile sweater ever. And I think I would really like to knit my best friend one for Christmas. So I'm thinking of doing that. Thinking of Christmas already! I mean, it is May and we're going to be in lockdown forever. So <laughs> might as well plan what I'm going to knit. Um, moving on to another finished object. My Felix um, pullover. Again, in Let Lopi. I am just loving Let Lopi at the moment. It's um, it's a nice chunky yarn. It's a warm yarn. It's nice to work with because it's sticky, and everything knits up quite quickly because it is a chunkier yarn. It's an Aran weight, I believe. So, yeah. I knit this in a um, sorry. I knit the size four. I am a thirty-six inch bust, but I prefer um, less. I prefer more ease, I should say. Um, so this is the 45 circumference. So yeah, I've got quite a bit of positive ease. And I also didn't um, decrease as much as the pattern calls for because I wanted a looser sleeve and then I just massively reduced and decreased on the final uh, the final row before the rib. Words are just too difficult at the moment. <laughs> so um, yeah, my Felix. I started this in January and then I knit the body and it knit really quick and then for some reason I just put it down and just didn't knit the sleeves. So when this whole uh, quarantine thing started and I'd finished my, uh, my test knit, which actually I'd finished this before we went into quarantine, um, I decided to finish my whips. Um, I just found some vegetable matter in woven in this, which you do get quite a bit um, with Let Lopi. As I said, it's quite rustic. So again, this is 45 um, circumference. I think this is the medium. It is a looser gauge. It's knit in a size six millimeter needles. The color's being blown out. There we go, that's more like it. It has this detail on uh, the increases because it's top down. Um, and again, I didn't decrease the sleeves. I did the sleeves exactly the same as I did this one. So they are a, um, a looser fit. And yeah, I wear this quite a lot as well. I've worn this over dresses and with jeans. Um, I, will, I think I will knit another one of these in a different color because it's just a nice, easy jumper to have. Um, I wasn't. I I loved the color on the. Um, this is the color that the pat that the one in the pattern is knit out of, and I loved it. And I was unsure if it would suit me, but I do wear it quite a lot, and I do like it. I'm thinking of a green maybe next time, like a really, not a bright green, like a rusticy kind of green. That reminds me, actually. I have. Oh no, it's there. Um, I thought I'd left something downstairs, but I've not. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking of a, um, like a dark, dark green for my next one. Um, my other FO is I have been sample knitting for um, the alpaca lady that lives down the road. Um, she has a lot of alpacas. I have bought some uh, alpaca fibre from her. And she had some um, 
that had been spun up for her. Um, which she gave to me and asked if I would knit her some samples. She wanted something lacy. Um, she's got socks and hats and all that kind of thing. But she wanted something um, that showed off the lace. Um, I hated every minute. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's, um, I started it thinking that I would love it and then I did I did do it wrong this is the first time I've knit lace um, so some of the pattern is wrong there's a whole bit somewhere but I'd done that much that I just couldn't I couldn't the thought of ripping back um, because there's no way I could work down and figure it out. But I got there in the end. So this is called Grace and it is a bolero. So it has the sleeve here and then open back and then another sleeve here. And then it's grafted together in the middle. And so it's... Um, yeah, this. I haven't, have I blocked this actually? Yeah, I did block it. I blocked them as individual pieces and then sewed them together. Um, so yeah, this is for the lady down the road who owns the alpaca farm. I haven't seen her obviously because we all have to stay home and um, not speak to anyone <laughs> um, so yeah I've told her that I've obviously finished it by text and things but I can't give it to her just yet but yeah I'm not gonna lie I, I hated every minute of knitting this it was just laborious I mean it's a beautiful um, pattern and it does have an effective um, but it was just, it was just tedious and mind-numbing and you really had to think about each, you know, it wasn't TV knitting, so that just, yeah, drove me insane. But it's done now. Although she still wants some more um, things knitting because I still have quite a lot of the wool left over. So I was going to knit, um... A shawl, a lace shawl, which I did start, um, and then I went wrong, and I don't know where I went wrong, so I took it off the needles and threw it in the naughty corner. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, this I showed on the last podcast that I didn't upload. <laughs> I need to stop saying that because I probably will upload it. Um, but this is the shawl. Um, at the time it wasn't named. It is now named. It is called Little Golden Moments. And um, yeah, this is the shawl by Maddie Harvey. Um, this was the first shawl that I've ever knit. Um, it was um, quite quick considering you have over 800 um, stitches by the end but there was a lot of interest because it was constantly changing and you're constantly um, even on the garter the, you've got these slip stitches um, and then you have these clam stitch um, so yeah it did knit up very quickly um, and this is a sample for um, Botanical Yarn. This is her yarn. And um, she asked if I would knit this, so I did. Yeah, so that is that. I love this little detail. It's really cute. This little clam stitches at the end. Um, those are my FOs.
I have two works in progress. Um, one, no, they're both, both test knits. Um, one I dyed the yarn for. This beautiful teal green. So during this whole pandemic thing that's going on right now, I um, decided, well, no, I'll start again. So yeah, during this whole thing that we find ourselves in, um, it's taking quite a while to get things through the post, which is totally understandable. Um, the Royal Mail are working incredibly hard at the moment and with everyone staying at home, people are ordering more um, making their job harder and busier. So yeah, things are taking a little bit longer to get to where they need to be. And also the whole money thing as well. I don't want to be spending money where I shouldn't really, you know, it's a, it's a luxury. I decided that I would use what I had. So I had some undyed merino. Um, it's 100% Falkland merino. And I decided that I would just dye it myself. This is the first time I've ever used acid dye. I have tried a dabbled in um, natural dye, which I showed in my last podcast. Um, and this, I wanted the main body to be teal. Um, I'm not usually a green person, but um, yeah, I'm just attracted to teal at the moment. So this is the main body. This is all I've got left out of, um, I've just finished the body, I've yet to do the sleeves. So I've actually run out because this isn't gonna be enough to do two sleeves, so I need to dye up some more. Which is fine because I've still got um, some of the dye left over. And then this is botanical yarn. Um, and this is mini set that she does. So what I did was, this is for the contrast in colour. Um, again, this is for my test knit. Um, so I can't really, I can show you a little bit. But it's an Andrea Maori test knit. Um, so what I did, she uses Spin Cycle. Now, Spin Cycle isn't everyone's budget, um, definitely isn't mine at the moment. And I was going to treat myself because it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I decided that wearing a jumper that would cost in the region of um, around 80 pounds, seemed a little ridiculous at the moment. So what I did was um, Sophie, who owns Botanical Yarn, um, had these mini sets. And these are the mini sets. Um, they were 20 gram, mini, 20 gram minis. And I decided that I would shop small and help a local business. Um, so yeah, I bought these minis. I then put these on my Swift and um, I, did, I did math and I worked out that six rotations of my, uh, of my Swift would equate to four grams. I think that's what I did. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm using four grams of each of for each rotation because I've done quite a few in here. So this, I don't know what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say. This is the contrasting colour, and it was a eighty gram ball. Um, and what I did was I joined each colour. So um, I pre-joined everything. So that I didn't then have to work, have to worry about joining each colour each time, and it was just a continuous, and then it would just be a gradual fade throughout. Um, so that's what I did. I got there in the end. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. 
So this is going to be for the sleeves. Um, I'll so I'll show from... you a little sneak peek. This is the Andrea Maori test knit. It is brioche, um, which is what I've used the contrasting on. Um, and it has color work throughout. So yeah, exciting stuff. It is really cute, um, and I um, helical knit. Is that what they, I think that's what they call it? Helical knitting, where you use two balls at the same time because it's um, hand dyed, so you um, end up with it's not that stripey, but there is a little bit of stripes because there's some um, paler bits in here and some darker bits, so it's just the natural progression of. Um, and dying I suppose. So that is one and then my other one is a cardigan. Um, well a jacket I suppose. I'm using the same grey as what I knit this out of. Um, I'm naturally drawn towards neutral colours so I think if uh... so, um, yeah, this is the um, frost fairy jacket by the Autumn Acorn, and it's a top down um, longish cardigan. Um, with a big collar or hood. I'm thinking I'm going to knit the hood. Although it's the 12th of May and the cutoff for this is the 30th of May. <laughs> so there's not really that much time. And I've done this much. I did only start it yesterday. Well, I didn't. I started it in March when I originally got, was it March or maybe February? But then she had some issues with the, um, with the pattern. Um, the Knit, the test knitters weren't getting the correct amount of stitches that it mentioned in the pattern um, and she'd gone through a few different tech editors and then um, we didn't hear from her for a while and then she uh, managed to get it sorted and sent it out to us last week so um, the original deadline was the 27th of April I think but um, it's now the 30th of May but it's quite a big, um, a big knit, like it's a, it's a jacket. So yeah, we'll see how we get on. The cut update for the Andrew Maori um, test knit is the 14th of June. So that's why I wanted to get the body finished on that. Um, and then, do as much as I can on this. I think, I mean, now that I'm not working, I think I should be able to get that done. Three in three weeks. Um, yeah. I always doubt myself that, you know, like three weeks isn't a long time to knit something, but I knit my um, Jennifer Steingas in two weeks and I was working full time and I knit this color work yoke um, jumper. So, it is doable, it's totally doable. I can easily do that. And then um, I've got two weeks then to do the sleeves, which is more than enough time for sleeves. Um, what I have been purchasing, I bought this uh, little um, project bag from Fiber Fox uh, when they did the virtual Yorkshire Yarn Festival. It's got little uh, foxes. I've put my pin on here, my knitter pin, um, and it's just a nice size. And at the moment, it has my uh, test knit in there. I also bought from the Fiber Fest um, Hermione from the Fiber Fox. I just liked the uh, the contrasts and the colours. 
I did think that I would knit the Hermione socks in this, but I'm just not feeling socks at the moment. I've had a knot, I've had a knot, I've had a sock on the go for um, probably a year, probably a year, and I've yet to finish the first one. I've not even got to the heel, so I doubt this will be socks, but it's in my stash now, so we'll, we shall see. Like I said, I've not done any spinning, um, I'm excited to get this done though. Um, it smells so good. So I'm waiting for my uh, carders to arrive. I only bought them yesterday, so it will be a little while. I bought that out with my birthday money from my mum. So, um, yeah, that's nice. It's my husband's birthday this week. Um, so we're both having lockdown birthdays this year. Um, it was, my birthday was nice. Um, he went to Marks and Spencer's and bought lots of nice food and got me a cake and it was a really sunny day and we played um, Uno and uh, Uno the card game um, and I knit on my Andrea Mowry test knit and sat outside and, and yeah it was just a really nice chilled day. It's one of those that um, you don't plan but you will probably remember that birthday for a long time. It's like, um, I remember years ago, we were moving house and it was around Christmas time and we boxed up all of the house and we literally just had a mattress in the bedroom and the front room was full of all of the boxes ready to move. Um, and we had just the mattress in the bedroom and the TV and that was it. And we made sandwiches for Christmas dinner and we went on a drive. It snowed that year, which is very rare in the UK for it to snow on Christmas Day. So we went for a drive in the hills um, to go and play in the snow and we ate um, sandwiches and had a picnic. And it's a Christmas that I will always remember, but r the run up to it, I was dreading it because I just thought it's not going to be Christmas, we're not going to have a Christmas tree. Um, we decided that we weren't really, uh, you know, getting gifts and things and it was just going to be put on hold for that year. And I love Christmas. Christmas is a big deal in, in my world. Like, I, I just love Christmas. Always have. My parents always made it special. Um, so, yeah, I was really disappointed in the run-up to it. And then it ended up being probably the best... Christmas because it was just different and it was just um, me and my husband um, and the dog and yeah it was just a nice it was nice so I think this birthday that's just gone because it was so different and um, you know we couldn't go anywhere and we couldn't do anything and it was just um, more special because it was so simple and we just took joy in the simple things like playing card, card games in the garden and um, eating nice food from Marks and Spencer's <laughs> so yeah um, we'll do this something similar for Steve's I'm sure um, yeah so I've not really got much else to chat to you all about just thought I would um, Come in and say hi, make the most of the fact that I'd showered and wore a bra today. You know, if we're being honest. Um, times are strange at the moment. So, hope you are all well. Hope you are staying safe. And, um, yeah, I will see you again soon. Mm -hmm.